What does uncertainty mean to you? Not knowing what's going to happen next, not being understood, not knowing what the future holds for you as a child, but also seeing the same for your own children. A feeling of unpredictability. At the age of five, civil war torn my country apart. My childhood was spent running from one country to another. I never had the chance to explore the world around me due to consistent uncertainty. Uncertainty in the form of whether I would survive the raids tomorrow. I never had a real base, which I struggle even now sometimes to believe I have one. I blame my unsettled life for not allowing me build up trusted connection with the world around me. When I was 18, I had my first child, Zach. He was this beautiful, chubby boy who was the joy of my life, brought me so much happiness. My mom was over the moon that I brought a little boy into the family. Finally, I thought I had everything I could ever wish for. One day, I heard Zach laughing to himself. So I went upstairs to see what he was laughing at, hoping to join with him. When I went into the room, he was looking at me, but not looking at me. Something had changed. Something was not right. From that point onwards, he continued to deteriorate. Lost the words he spoken. No eye contact. And no engagement with people. It was like my child slowly taken away from me without anyone believing me. Imagine someone physically taking your child and the trauma involved. In my mother tongue language, there's no word for autism. The closest word would be the interpretation of someone being mentally ill. I could not accept that for my dear little boy. I felt that feeling I felt as a child. That feeling that I thought I ran away from and left behind. I hated it. It was that feeling of fear and uncertainty again. At the age of two and a half, Zach was diagnosed with severe autism. He displayed unusual and repetitive behavior, lack of empathy, and no awareness of danger. Some of the characteristics of autism. For the first time in my life, I had to meet a team of intimidating professionals, which I've never heard of them before. I had no context to understand what was going on or who these people were. As these people don't exist in Somalia. Ultimately, they had no context to understand me. There seemed little consideration of the possible cultural barriers. They talk in terms that were foreign to me. They speak with each other in the meeting as if I was nobody. 
It felt like I was just there as a tick box exercise. Mom was there when decisions were made. It was like I was present, but not present. They barely knew Zach. I was his mother and cared for him 24-7. But no, in that environment, I was not the expert. They knew best for Zach. And so they made all the decisions of what happened next. I decided to speak with my family about what happened with the professionals. And the response was, what do Western doctors know about us? It's different with us. They don't understand us. It was clear my family and friends were thinking. Doctors referred to him as though he was mentally ill. So, my family didn't want me to share any more concerns about SAC with the professionals and the outside world. My mother thought, tried to reassure me, look at him, he's so handsome. And the way he gazed long periods of times at things means he's so intelligent. And so, I should not worry. Bless her for being so comforting. If only she understood autism, that staring at things long period of, of times means he's very autistic. I felt stuck between two worlds, the professionals and my community, neither of which understood me and neither of which understood Zach. Stuck in the middle, which has become the title of my book. And it was here that I started, us and them, me and Zach, against the establishment and community struggling to break free from a long-standing culture. Special need schools was not working for Zach. So I decided to take things into my own hands and home educate Zach. I had one goal. What can I do today to get Zach closer to be independent, to lead a life with dignity? Expectations and aspirations go a long way. I discovered a home program schooling called Applied Behavior Analysis. This approach involves the applied use of behavioral principles into everyday situations. ABA was combined with sensory processing intervention. The results were life-changing. Zach started to speak and became aware of his surroundings. But I must point out, autistic people are very individual, and what works for them, one does not work for the other. As a family, we became educators, and the consistency between us and the tutors made Zach closer to be independent every day. I had to rise up to the challenge I had given myself. I had to become educated to help me be an informed mediator and a voice for Saki's needs. I had to do this in order to be able to make decisions that I knew best for Zach instead of others making them for me. This was the battle against the resistance and the cultural molding from the people I belong to. If changing Saki's life was my first mission, working with the wider community whose experience I mirror my own has been my second. It was the disruptions in my life 
were out of my control. It was time for me to disrupt in my own way. When I was told Sack had autism, I felt ashamed. I was reaching out to my culture's attitudes towards disability. But today, I am proud of telling a story that changed my life and showed me Sack and I can make it. A story that made me leave my loved ones for an unknown culture and its people. I hope my transformative learning will help others and their loved ones can steer their future directions in similar circumstances. After being stuck in the middle for so long, I decided to dedicate to being Saki's voice until he has a voice of his own. I used my voice to demand appropriate provisions for Zach. I started to map the progress he has made and then would make decisions whether improvement was needed or change of providers. I realized his potentials and started taking him to different activities, including aerial, climbing, and gym. Research shows different physical exercises can gain specific mental gains, especially the autism community. For Zach, the benefits were huge. I then started taking him to maths and English tuitions and supermarkets he hated. It was not easy. Some days he would cope, and some days he would have a meltdown. But with planning, visual structure, and perseverance with it, he started to enjoy every activity and became so good at it. As the famous Temple Grindon says, people with autism are different but not less. My fight back has been to create a community organization called Autism Independence, which mentors parents to engage with the system to get the best outcome for their children, to ensure that services are integrated and have high expectations and aspirations for people with autism. My second goal for autism independence was to bridge the gap between professionals and parents. This saw me carrying out research and using theater to raise awareness. A film by four women, including myself, all with autistic children. Going out of the house is a real problem with Yusuf. When we go out to the street, he can just run off and it's just not safe. When we go shopping, he shouts and he screams and people look at me and say, why don't I discipline my child? But they just don't understand. What can I do? I don't understand. Are you saying there's something wrong with Yusuf? Mrs Abdi, I believe your son has a complex neurological disorder called autism. Autism? What is autism? I don't understand. I never heard of autism before. Ultimately, my love for Zach was greater than my fear of any cultural rejection or community shame. He taught me to dare and disrupt in a positive way. This set my life on a new path, and one 
I would never have gone on to if it weren't for Zach. And one that took me to another course to be the first in my family to go to higher education and prepare a PhD. Early intervention is vital after a diagnosis of autism. Parent involvement is absolutely crucial. How, however, early intervention can be very broad. In 1997, Patricia Holing, a clinical psychologist from St. George's Hospital Medical School in London, and her colleague carried out research with over 1,200 parents with autistic children. Their children range from 2 to 49. They study focus on parent views. Many, many parents reported falling into a black hole after a diagnosis with minimal support. In my experience, I was in danger for getting stuck in that black hole. It is the vision of expectations that nourish the independence of individuals with autism and the independence that leads to the fullest potentials and the rights of every child under the UNCRC Convention. Every school should have tailored intervention for independence, despite the level of child development, and the same for the parents in the home environment. Autism independence gives families practical step-by-step -step guidelines to everyday situations, from doing their shoelaces to using fork and knife, to taking notes to school reception to self-care and planning their day. The three things that helped me get stuck where he is today were understanding the autism and the system supports it, high expectations, focusing on the independence in every level, and disabling myself and having a system to evaluate, monitor, and be productive at meetings that enable Saki's development. My challenge is that we are our children's future, and we are their voice. People told me Sack would never talk, but today, he chats up girls in the local climbing center and is a well-known figure <laughs> in where we live. He used to have all his decisions made for him. Today, he plans his day meals and activities. It's gone beyond being able to speak. He fair plies his problems and comes up with the most incredible creative solutions. He has learned he has a power of agency and self-efficacy. He leads his own life and makes his own choices. He's very happy and fun to be with, and he's always making people laugh. His charm and happiness is really, really contagious. No more us than them now, but a hero and a role model. It's only fair Sack has the last day of my talk. Mm -hmm.